This is a guy who I would consider the heir to my Indian crown. Please give it up for the very funny Mr. Paul Varghese. <laughs> really drunk last night. <laughs> Woke up this morning, opened up my fridge, there was a seven layer burrito from Taco Bell. <laughs> but I don't remember getting it. I was like, thank you, drunk Paul. <laughs> you know, you can say what you want about drunk Paul, but he loves to surprise sober Paul. <laughs> he cares, he's a true friend. Every night after the bar is closed, drunk Paul drives me home. He motivates me too. He gives me the courage to talk shit to guys twice my size. <laughs> Sometimes he tries to help me a little bit too much though. I get the phone call the next morning from my ex-girlfriend. Did you call me last night and tell me you're still in love with me? I'm like, uh, no, that was drunk Paul. <laughs> yeah, sober Paul still thinks you're a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I actually got pulled over last week. Cop comes up to my car and goes, sir, do you know your rear passenger side brake light was out? And I go, no officer, cause I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I'm inside the car. <laughs> You kind of have an advantage over me. Um, maybe if I was pushing the car. <laughs> but then again, if I was pushing the car, the brake light should never come on. Because if I wanted the car to stop, I'd just quit fucking pushing, you know? <laughs> I love drinking. You ever drink so much you're sitting on the couch looking for the seatbelt? Anybody? It's me? That's why I love New Year's Eve, only holiday required by law to drink. Several years back, it fell on a Saturday, which if you're like me, you probably got so drunk on Saturday night, you stumbled into church on Sunday morning. Priest brings a communion wine, you're like, ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Shit, Father, I barely held down the wafer. I think the body of Christ is coming back up. <laughs> I need to get in shape, though. I actually need to get in shape, because I am too skinny. I get cold really easily. I shiver when I eat a breath mint, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't complain about being cold when you're skinny though. People always blame that shit on your weight. You ever notice that? Like, Paul, of course you're freezing. You weigh like, what, 10 pounds, man? I'm like, fuck you, fat people get cold too, yeah. <laughs> Last time I checked, Santa had a coat, yeah? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't coming down the chimney in a wife beater, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's embarrassing being this skinny. Can you imagine my funeral, one Paul bear? <laughs> Just holding up my coffin like a boom box? <laughs> <laughs> That's why tomorrow I'm starting my Michael Phelps diet. Olympic swimmer takes in 12,000 calories a day. That's amazing, because I did the math, and that's 116.5 shots of Jaeger. <laughs> a day. If you don't know what Jaeger is, it's poison. Squeezed straight from Satan's titty itself, okay? You ever open a bottle of Jaeger? Let's have a demonic laugh. It's like, <laughs> If you're not laughing, it's because you never had Jaeger. Here's the thing. You think your alcohol story compares to mine doesn't even come close. It's like, Paul, I never got drunk off Jaeger, but I have got drunk off Chardonnay. That's like saying, I never got attacked by a grizzly bear, but I have been tickled by a really hairy guy. <laughs> Match up. Speaking of the Olympics, my people, India, we finally won a gold medal in the Olympics. Finally. Yes. Amen. But we won it, we won it in air rifle shooting. I was like, thanks a lot, Indian dude. Everybody in the world already thinks all brown people are terrorists, as is. And now you just won first place in a sniper competition? Only way he could be any more suspicious, he had a beard down here and he held the rifle over his head and started dancing afterwards. I'm like, bro, this ain't CNN, dude. Sit down and shave. And that was our first gold medal, 24 years. So you know they didn't have the Indian National Anthem ready to go. <laughs> Holy shit, India won? <laughs> Fuck, hurry up, get on iTunes, download something Indian. <laughs> All right, boss, I got Jungle Book soundtrack. <laughs> Johnny Quest. <laughs> and now the Indian National Anthem. <laughs> do, 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 do. FYI, that is not the Indian National Anthem. Don't go into work tomorrow, walk by Samir's cubicle and sing that song, because he will whoop your ass. Or his tie will start doing this, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
office, I have a lot of friends who are actually scared that there might be a race war at some point, white people versus black people, and that scares me, because I'm brown. <laughs> like, what team am I on, right? Like, shirts or skins, you know? And how are you guys gonna pick me? Is it gonna be like seventh grade gym class? I'm the last one picked again. It's like, guys, come on, guys, guys. I can build your website. Come on, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> if there is a race war between white people and black people, you know, you know who I feel sorry for, white people who tan, because they'll get caught in the crossfire. Because think about this, the main ingredient to any successful war, your enemies should look completely different than you. That's how you know who to shoot. You're like, I'm white, he's brown, boom, no questions asked. That's a problem in Africa. You have all these countries having civil wars for decades because of Africans killing other Africans. How do you know who's the enemy? I was like, okay, wait a second, are you pointing the gun at me or the guy behind me? Should I turn around and point my gun at him? Are you pointing the gun at me or the guy behind <laughs> If you meet somebody through online dating and they look nothing like their picture, can you call tech support? <laughs> you guys know how tech support works? It's guys in India. Try to act like they're American. Use fake American names, American slang, trying to relate to us. What pisses me off now, now they pretend they're so American, they pretend they can't pronounce my last name. Yeah, which is bullshit. It's probably their last name, you know what I mean? They're like, Mr. Varghese? I'm like, roll the R, last E silent. Look at your name badge, bro. It's right there, bro. <laughs> you realize now they can pop up the city you're calling from and the local baseball team. They can make small talk that way. So if you were in Detroit, the guy in India would be like, hey, how about those tigers? <laughs> uh, how about your tigers? <laughs> uh, you have real tigers. Ours are just Puerto Ricans. <laughs> never, play, never play charades with somebody born after 1986. They will make you feel old. I got the words video game controller and instead of doing this, I did this. You realize how different it is now for kids? I have a cousin in the seventh grade gave me his school picture. He looked phenomenal. Come to find out, the photographer now brings in a digital camera, takes 10 shots of each kid. Kid gets run around to the back of the camera, pick which one he wants. Out the... You remember how stressful our picture day was? <laughs> one shot. It's always when somebody yells your name out to you. Paul, what? Click. <laughs> Did I make it? The photographer's like, fuck if I know. He doesn't know. He can't tell. You don't know. You gotta wait, what? Six weeks. That big manila envelope comes in. You're like, oh. I hope I made it. Squeeze open that gold tax. You need to pull it out, that big poster size. You're like, oh shit, I didn't make it. This looks like a mug shot. And the ones, what's behind it's rubbing your face that much more. 32 more wallet size right behind you. Like, oh, this is ugly on the go. You would think when they were developing the film, they'd be like, there's no way his parents want this. There's no. You gotta give that kid a refund. We'll just put not pictured in the yearbook. You know what I mean? Because there were pictures in the yearbook she had never. Remember the kid who blinked halfway through that kid? What? Why'd you put him in there? Why? Why? Or the girl with the big cornflake rooster bangs? You know what I'm talking about? The ones? You know what I'm talking about? Like in the, in the yearbook, they actually, they're so big, they go in the row of pictures above her. Like that's how big they are. You know what I'm talking about? I hit home there. Okay, sorry. Too soon. It's been 20 years, people. If you actually go to my dad's photo album, you flip it over, there's no pictures of me from the ages of 12 to 20 in my dad's photo album. There's nothing. I asked my dad why. Seriously, he looks at me and goes, you were ugly. <laughs> You looked awkward. We felt awkward. <laughs> Who wants to relive those memories? <laughs> and, <laughs> I know I'm not a good looking guy. The only thing I'm going for me, I have a really sexy voice. It's smooth. And I know my voice is sexy because the voices inside my head turn me on. Okay? <laughs>
I am moody as hell. Here's the thing, ladies, every single man here, moody as hell. 50% of the time, not your fault. You let us sit there, we will get over it. But every girlfriend I've ever had, though, has to know why 100% of the time. She has to Dr. Fill it, you know? Like, Paul, what's the matter? Nothing. You know you can tell me. Fucking let it go. Well, is it me? Now it is. <laughs> but what am I doing? That right there. Well, has it always bothered you? Only when you fucking do it. My ex used to yell at me all the time. True story, I'm staying inside a bar with my friend. She pulls up in a car, rolls down the window, starts yelling at me. Like, so bad, my friends thought they were in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, yelling at me, rolling down the window. And I don't even know if she's really rolling down the window or if the window was just getting out of the way. You know, like... So here's how nice I am. I bring her into the bar, I buy her a drink. Thinking that'll calm her down, she pours a drink right on me. I'm like, really, that drink cost me six bucks. This shirt cost me four. <laughs> Problem is, I'm a sucker for a cute girl. She was a cute girl, I'm a sucker for a cute girl. So if I'm lucky enough to get your number, ladies, I'll call back, get the voicemail, you call back a day later, game we all play. As soon as you call back, though, I'm picking up the phone. Ain't no games here. I'm desperate. As soon as a number pops up on the caller ID on my cell phone, I will take that call. I could be in a ditch. Pinned underneath my car, steering wheel in my chest, like... 911? I'm in a terrible wreck. My eyes are bleeding. Could you please send an ambulance? I think the car's gonna explode. I'm on Wilshire and... Could you hold on? I really gotta take this call. <laughs> Jamie, what's going on? <laughs> Silly. I've actually met my dream girl. I actually met her. Known her for over 10 years. This past year, I finally got the nerve to tell her to her face exactly how I felt about her. This is what she said back to me, word for word. Well, Paul, you really know how to make things awkward. Ladies, I have a list of five things you should never fucking tell me when I pour my heart out to you. Coming in at number five. Well, Paul, you really know how to make things awkward. Number four, no hable inglés. Number three, I thought you were gay. Number two, I'm gay. And number one, And on this, man. But see, the thing is, I can't talk about dating to my folks because my folks had an arranged marriage, which is like eHarmony.com without the computers. <laughs> They've been married so long, they don't understand any marriage that wasn't arranged. They look down upon it. Like, hey, Paul, your cousin Asha got married. I'm like, really, was it arranged? Oh, no, they fell in love. <laughs> they had a love marriage. We were so disappointed. <laughs> That's what my dad jumps in. That's the problem, Paul. All these love marriage and then divorce. I've been with your mother 38 years. <laughs> I don't love her. We're just hanging out. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>